Welcome and what is up there everybody this is Casper Trader back here with another video today and in today's video we'll be doing a portfolio review showing guys how our portfolio has performed over the last week but boy do we have a video for today our portfolio has changed so much over the last week we have both bought and sold options we both bought and sold different stocks and on top of that we even deposited $1,000 into our account so today's gonna be one heck of a video showing guys all the stocks that I have traded in the last week. So I did make a lot of moves in the last week, which I'm super excited to get into. But before we do so, I'd really appreciate you guys could smash that like button below and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you guys have not yet. I'd really appreciate it a ton. I post weekly portfolio updates of me trying to grow my portfolio from $2,000 up to $100,000 as fast as possible. All right, guys, so without further ado, as you can see, today we're down around $4.70. That's just because of Bitcoin bouncing around. In the last week, we are up 1.15% or $100. In the last month, we're up $600 or 7.4%. In the last three months, we're up around $1,000, which is around almost 13%. In the last year, we're up 11.13% or almost $890, which isn't too bad, honestly, in the last year. And overall, we are still actually, we're actually up. We've been down ever since, I think it was like December 2018. We've been down on our overall portfolio and we've been losing money ever since. And that was mostly because of options and me doing dumb trades and not even knowing how to trade options before I actually traded them. And that got me down to a point where at one point I was down $1.6,000, around 18%. But that, at that time, I was like down to almost zero. And from there, I decided I'm going to take a turn in my portfolio. I'm gonna, I have to do something different so I recover. I'm not just going to be doing these stupid risky option trades. So I decided to just long-term invest into some solid growth stocks. And that is how we have recovered actually pretty quickly. Uh, we've recovered from our whole loss. So March 20th to August 9th, whatever it is, uh, today's August 9th. Yeah, so just a few months, we've been able to recover all of our losses and still have $33 in profit on top. So I'm definitely not complaining. I think that we're doing pretty well. And hopefully we can stay above uh, the red and keep the portfolio in the green of all time for as long as possible and just have it grow and grow and grow. But we're making progress. That's what's important. So we did buy and sell some options. I did do some stupid options trades. I have to admit, I was a little, I don't know, excited, I would say. I was looking for something to do. I was excited about maybe trading some options. What else to do? Uh, not really, but I just saw some potential in the stock market, um, especially with SPY, which tracks the S&P 500, for those who don't know. I saw some potential in it. I saw like a dip and I was like, there's a dip for no reason. There's no like huge fundamental backup for the dip. It's 99.9% .9 gonna bounce back up like tomorrow or in, in a few days. So I bought some calls on it as you can see. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, I don't know why it says put expert. Oh, that was another options trade I did. So we did have a lot of options trade on uh, SPY, but we did have one trade where I bought a call for 149 and then I sold it because I became impatient, which shows that I'm probably not gonna be buying options. I'm just gonna stay stick with selling them because I feel like I'm not patient enough to just hold on while the stocks are losing value and time decay is not on your side. So I lost like $24 on that, which isn't too well, isn't too good, but at least I didn't lose 100%. So that's what happened right there. But we also did play with some options with puts, which obviously went the right way. And we made like 33 bucks from this where we bet that the S&P 500, we did a credit spread and I had to go back and watch my own video about credit spreads in order to uh, remind myself how to do credit spreads. Cause over this time I've forgotten, it's been like almost a year. So yeah, that's basically what we did. We bought a credit spread, basically betting that S&P 500 won't fall below 321 by the end of the week. And obviously it recovered and we made our $33 in premium. So that was pretty nice, but that's not all. We also did trade options on TNA, but this is more of the usual. Um, what we did is that we sold, no, okay. So we did close our other position on TNA. Uh, let's see if we can get into it right here. Um, I don't know why it doesn't show. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so we sold, we bought our put, 
because I was selling it so I needed to buy it back to get rid of it basically and what I did is that I bought it back I took six dollars that I could have made in potential profit later on um, I waited one more day for it to expire so I took that um, just to get my collateral back and then what I did from there is that I bought another option I sold sorry I sold another option uh, for the next week because I don't know why I feel like it's better to buy them on Fridays for the next week I just feel like they get more premium and more decay over the weekend that might just be me and my weird realizations but um, it's been working well for me uh, so far so that's what I've been doing I bought I so sorry I sold this put on TNA that betting it's not going to go below 31.5 and guess what it's been growing like crazy ever since and why I chose 31.5 it's because it looked like a support level to me um, I don't know if I could find it right here not sure if I could find it on the Robinhood charts but I did see it as a support in my opinion uh, right around this area where okay yeah so it had a resistance here a resistance here resistance here resistance here around the 30 I would say th it was a growing resistance it was uh, if I could draw a trend line it was slightly on an upwards trend and I decided that it's probably not gonna fall below 31.5 dollars per share um, obviously I didn't use Robinhood charts for this because that would be a disaster but I decided to go with 31.5 as my bottom line and guess what it's been sticking above that for now it's been one day and instead of making those six dollars we actually made what is it now thirteen dollars so sometimes I guess it is worth it so that's what we're doing right now and I actually might be looking to move up my uh, TNA put to a higher level maybe thirty three dollars per share something like that maybe even thirty three point five play a little bit risky because later on if I even do get a sign I might be trying to look into um, selling selling covered calls which I haven't done yet and I'm looking to experiment with so I'm gonna get a, go a little bit riskier and probably um, sell this I mean buy it back and then sell another one at um, 33 or maybe 33.5 just to give myself some more premium and a higher risk so that's what I'm gonna be doing and yeah that's basically what we've been doing with options but with stocks boy did we do a lot as well so if you've been watching my videos you know that my portfolio has changed a little bit and especially because you see this stock right here near the top that usually wasn't here and it wasn't in my portfolio in the ever until now actually and I got to tell you guys I never buy stocks before earnings just to basically uh, bet on earnings that if earnings go up I'll make money or anything like that I never do that but if I ever think about I just have the slight thought of doing that then usually if I would have bought it it would have went up and I would have made money but the one time that I do actually decide to buy stocks before earnings guess what they dump and they fall 11% even like 13% um, or 14% at the beginning of the day so this stock Illumina um, as you can see there uh, I watched a whole video on this actually not one I watched multiple videos on the stock um, they basically from what I understood they try to cure genetic diseases I mean they try to cure uh, diseases that people are born with by altering their genes and they have like these facilities where um, they're doing research on this and they're able to actually possibly have this as a huge market in the future because as you know there's a lot of people who are unfortunately born with some uh, I would say disabilities and uh, this company uh, could possibly even cure those um, through altering the, the genes of the individual but that's what I really understood from it I could go a little bit more in depth but since it's just a portfolio analysis that's what I'm gonna say for now but I do see some potential in this company and I'm definitely looking to long-term hold this stock and I did buy two I think it was like 1.6 shares before earnings and I dumped in another 200 after earnings because it fell so much sorry I bought I think 150 after earnings yeah right here 150 after earnings um just to lower down my average cost but I'm looking to hold this stock for a while and it's actually one of my biggest holdings in my portfolio if not the biggest so hopefully this one does go well and right now it's on a dip so I think it could definitely recover and if it does break its resistance around the 390 dollar mark I think 390 yeah somewhere around there 
it could probably continue rising and growing and growing and growing into maybe, who knows, maybe it's going to be like Tesla where it's going to go from 350 to 800 really quick. Who knows? I don't know. I'm not a fortune teller, but I personally do see some potential in this company. I'm not a financial advisor, so make sure to do your own due diligence before investing. But that's just what I personally see value in with this company. So that's Illumina. Uh, our Apple shares are the same. We're doing good on that. Facebook has been growing like an absolute monster in the last week. It's up 5.8%. It was at like $278 at one point on Friday. So that's crazy to see how much profits they were. I mean, how much profits we were making with our position. Overall, we're up 35% on our uh, Facebook position or up around $200, which is definitely good. I'm not complaining at all. And I definitely see a lot of potential in Facebook, but right now I'm not looking to buy any more of it because it, it just grew up. It just grew so much recently. I don't think I'm going to feel good about buying it at this high of a price. So maybe if it does dip down in the future, I'll buy some more shares. But right now I'm good with that. Microsoft has been kind of standing in place. I uh, did have a big bounce though, like uh, over a week ago where it went from around 200 to 215, 216 really quickly. And I personally am a big fan of Microsoft stock. It's one of my favorite stocks. But again, um, this one's actually better than, for example, Facebook or Apple because those ones have been rising like crazy. And um, I might be looking to buy maybe a little bit more of Microsoft because it's one of those stocks that haven't recovered as much as, hasn't, haven't grown, sorry, as much as other stocks. Because if you look at Facebook and Apple, if we click on app, Apple really quickly, Apple has been growing like a monster, absolute monster ever, released, ever since it released its earnings. And I don't think it's ever going to stop. I mean, for the near future, it's probably not going to stop. It's going to continue growing uh, really quickly. And it's just a growth stock that's probably going to continue its growth over the years. But right now, not buying Apple. But for example, Microsoft is at the area where it hasn't spiked up as much as these companies have and I understand that is because they released their earnings a little bit earlier I think and they weren't that like wow um, like super shocking and that's why it's staying at this a spot that it's at but I do see some potential in it and I do feel much better buying a share of Microsoft than I do a share of Apple because it just hasn't grown that much and I feel like I'm getting a better deal for it if that makes sense so that's what we got with our main stocks but we did dump a lot of money into Tesla in the last week as well. I don't know, I just had a good feeling about it. Um, overall, I've been a huge fan of Tesla for, I would say the last few months at least, huge fan. But I wasn't really ready to buy a full share, so that's what I, why I've been just slowly investing, investing, investing. I think my first position on Tesla was like 200 something. Actually, I'm not exactly sure. But I did buy it at a really low price and I was up over 200. Not sure. Again, not sure. <laughs> but I bought my first amount. Maybe it might have been even 500. Sorry, maybe not 250. I don't think I got in that early. But I think I got in around the 500 area where I dumped in like 30 or 50 bucks. And boy, do I wish I bought a full share there. But um, overall, it's just been growing ever since that time. And we've built up our position to over $400 on the stock. And we're up still around $32 or 8.7%. Uh, in the last week, I would say we put in probably close to $200 into Tesla. And I feel like it's not at a terrible deal area right now because it's on a small dip. It usually hovers around the area of 490 480 But right now, it's just at the price of around 450 So it does have a little bit of a quote-unquote discount. But um, I, it's still a really expensive stock. It has a huge market cap and... Um, I just am slowly averaging into the stock because later in the future, if the stock happens to be a $5,000 per share stock, I will not feel terrible about myself and I'll make some profits as well. So that's what's going on with Tesla. I'm a huge fan. I see a lot of potential in it, but I'm not really able to invest in a full share right now. And here we got Next Era Energy. And Next Era Energy is also doing us pretty well. In the last week, it's doing pretty well. Um, it's not huge like Facebook or Apple but in the last week we're up 2.29 percent on it so that's pretty nice and overall I think I'm going to just hold on to my position on the stock I'm not going to add any more I'm happy with the position I'm at and I'm just looking to keep making money from it and especially 
uh, reinvesting the dividends that I get from it. Skyworks, this guy, I'm not sure if this was this week or last week. Yeah, it was probably last week. Yep. So it's been moving up a lot. It was around the $135 area. And then just a little bit over a week ago, it had a huge spike up to around 150 so around $15 per share that it moved up. And right now it's hovering around $144 per share. So overall, we're up 18% on our position. Not too bad. But this is one of the stocks that I'm considering buying more of. Um, I'm probably going to make it a, a two share position for now, at least because it's not even at a bad deal. Because as you can see, it's been at around 150 two times already. And right now it's sitting at around 145. So I'm getting like $5 lower. I'm buying more at the resistance. So that's why I'm getting around five lower, $5 lower price than I would be getting if I bought at the, uh, sorry, I'm buying at the support and I would, I'm getting $5 cheaper of a price than if I were buying at the resistance. And I see a lot of potential in this company. No way I don't see this stock stopping from growing this much. And I'm just probably gonna keep dumping in what I have, uh, just some spare cash and reinvesting the dividends back into my position. But overall, I just wanna get this to maybe a two share position size. And that's what I'm looking to do. So that's Skyworks. And uh, we got Uber right here. This one I was super excited about selling because I'm not really a big fan of it anymore. Uh, I think it does have potential in the future, but it's just not one of those companies that I see growing as quickly. Like it has potential, but it doesn't have the, the same kind of potential as for example, Tesla, Illumina, or some other stocks that I'm gonna show you. Uh, one of them is pretty interesting, but I'll talk about it later in the video. But Uber, I think has a lot of potential, but it's just not the kind of stock that I'm interested in buying that has a nice growth curve, has a lot of potential. And overall, I think it's a great stock. I was waiting to sell it after earnings if the earnings came out well, but unfortunately the earnings came out eh, all right. And they ended up having more Uber Eats deliveries, but they had less um, like actual drives where they would drive people. What do you call those? Just rides, Uber rides. Yeah, they had less Uber rides, but they had more deliveries. So it was a kind of a plus, uh, a pro and a con at the same time but overall the stock did fall around five percent from the price it was at but we bought the stock at 34 dollars and 70 cents so if it probably does bounce up to that kind of area well it was already at that area but i did not notice i thought it was around 34 but i guess it did end up spiking at the end of the day but i think i'm going to sell the stock if it, i just get to break even i'm even comfortable taking like a two percent loss on this two three percent but I want to take this money invest into something else that has more potential, in my opinion. Yeah, so that's basically Uber. And uh, let's see what else we have. We got AMD, which has also been growing like crazy. Uh, just got one stock in that buying and holding. CCL, uh, this one's just tanking, slowly, slowly tanking and going down. It's had a little bit of a bounce uh, in the last few days, but it's nothing huge. Uh, overall, I think this stock is going to bounce back up. To where that close at least to where it was at maybe 30 35 dollar range within the next few years which will take some time but that's like doubling your money so i'm just going to be calm with the stock and keep the position i have um maybe add a little bit more here and there but nothing much and just be looking to double my money if possible if the stock doesn't go bankrupt of course and as you can see we also did purchase um, our Amazon position, which has been here for a while. We got that, but we did purchase some FL, which is Foot Locker. And I see this stock as a pretty good dividend stock. That's first off because it has a 5.6% dividend yield. But the second thing about the stock is that, honestly, I was kind of buying it for like a swing trade, where as you can see, it has a really consistent pattern where it dips down, bounces back up, dips down, to let's say 28, bounces back up to 29. 28, 29, 28, 29. And here it went up to even 30. And I was looking to buy a little bit while it was on the low, which I kind of did. I bought it when it was low. And I'm now I'm waiting for the bounce back up to sell it. Um, just a little swing trade, but I don't think I'm gonna make that much profit on it. If something, I'll probably make like three, two, three percent. But hey, that's always something. So that's Foot Locker for you guys. And let's see what other stocks we bought. We also bought one share, just one share of Revolve. 
and this is a company that sells uh, women's clothing online but they have more of a newer I would say modern approach on marketing where they use influencers they use social media which I feel like is the more profitable way now to advertise than to like buy uh, newspaper ads or uh, buy billboard ads all that kind of stuff I feel like that that is the potential that this company has because of their marketing they also sell a high ticket product which hopefully on that high ticket product um, they're selling like clothes for like 500 800 dollars depending on what you buy um, so they're hopefully having good margins on that as well so it, they could be pretty profitable and if they're able to build a good brand around their name uh, basically their company sorry if they're able to build a good brand around their company they're going to be able to pull some nice profits in and overall we're up around eight percent our position but i'm definitely looking to buy more of it maybe i'll take out what i have in Foot Locker once it bounces up and put it into revolve and hang in with hang hang with me guys this is the last stock that we actually bought last two stocks that we bought in the last week and um that is gold right here we bought uh gold shares trust which tracks the price of gold in the last year gold's been doing really really well i decided to hop on the trend i don't know if that's a good idea or not because i bought at the like the very tip of the the growth i mean of the spike but hopefully i don't see growth falling in the future like distant future not near future because near future a lot of stuff can happen as you can see it's dipped down a lot here dipped down a lot here dipped down some here here and i think that it just has a good a good amount of potential in the long term because gold is always going to be holding its value compared to like uh, fiat money where the more the government prints aka stimulus checks uh, no that's just one of the things but as long as inflation goes up the money you have in your in cash will go down in value so that's why I think that gold is not a bad investment because it'll go up in price because it's not going to be inflated that much um, by inflation if that makes sense at all I know this video is getting a little bit long so that's why I might be not talking so clearly but um, yeah so that's what I think that gold is good I think that gold is a good investment because it will probably not lose value if something it will grow maybe it won't grow as fast as some growth stocks out there but it's always good to diversify a little bit even though I really want to have a growth focused portfolio that's kind of why I bought it right now because it is growing a lot but with that being said, I also do believe in Bitcoin as well because as inflation keeps rising, uh, gold and Bitcoin is technically a better investment than just having cash in your bank because Bitcoin also does not get inflated. They keep mining Bitcoins, but at a certain point, there's only going to be like 21 million Bitcoins out there. And if you own, I mean, if you own one, it's not like there's going to be randomly created another 80 bitcoins so um, you having that tiny portion is going to be an even smaller portion of the total amount of bitcoin so i think that bitcoin's a good anti-inflation investment and so is gold but um bitcoin is just super unpredictable honestly you could have huge spikes where it jumps down at 200 dollars per bitcoin in like one minute or it could jump up 300 dollars in one minute it could do stuff like that which is unpredictable but overall we're still up on our position around 140 dollars which i'm definitely not complaining about i'm looking to hold on to this and if if it ends up going up to maybe let's say i don't know 50 to 100 thousand dollars per bitcoin i will see some nice profits and i definitely won't be mad at not investing in it so that's basically my plan with bitcoin and then the last stock right here is lemonade and this stock focuses on more modernizing insurance I would say uh, more for housing if I understood what I read and watch videos on correctly um, they are they have insured their insurance company um, that f I think is all offline so it doesn't have any like actual buildings that it has to rent which is not good for profitability because you need to spend more money but it's more of a modern insurance option because you can do everything from just your phone so I said this could be another I would say market disruptor for the insurance area uh, because insurance has been the same way for over 100 years probably and something like this like lemonade can completely change the industry and honestly 
if I have some predictions for this stock, I am not a financial advisor again, I'm just sharing my own opinions, but if this stock does become more mainstream, I mean, this company becomes more mainstream for people to use, I definitely see it doubling, tripling, maybe even quadrupling in size, um, because its market cap right now is only like 2.9 billion, that could easily double or triple, I would say, in my opinion. So that's basically the stocks that we are holding in our portfolio. I know that the video was a little bit longer, but we did make a lot of moves. So thank you guys all for who's, all for you guys who stayed to the end. And I apologize for my um, messed up speech, maybe a little bit, because I've been talking for so long and trying to talk a little bit faster to get through all of this. But if you guys watch the end, make sure to smash that like button below and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you guys have not yet. And thank you guys all so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.